Hey guys, Dr. Davin Lim, board certified dermatologist. Today's topic will be a comparison between at-home microneedling versus at-home chemical peels, the pros and cons, the dangers, and which one I prefer. So let's get straight into it. In the context of acne scarring, I think that chemical peels can be useful. Now, in most of my publications, I use TCA or trichloroacetic acid in a concentration between 70 to 100%. Whilst this is great as a clinical um, treatment, for deep ice pick scars as well as box scar scars, and in my publication I describe something called polymorphic scars. The downside about using this technique is that if you don't know what you're using, it leads to a high rate of complications. The complications of chemical peels include scarring, what's known as idiosyncratic scarring. In other words, you treat the scar but end up with more scarring. It can also lead to what's known as a spread scar, which has been described in my publication, I've given warnings about how not to use it and where not to use it, include midline scars as well as scars without defined edges. It can also lead to delayed erythema, in other words, redness, as well as post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So these are very real concerns if it's not used in professional hands. So in the context of the use of chemical peels for an at-home treatment, universally, all dermatologists will say, don't do it. Certainly, if you want to use lower concentrations of something like glycolic acid, it can be done with relative safety. However, the efficacy, in other words, the effectiveness in the context of acne scarring is not there. If you want to use something like glycolic acid to improve your skin texture, you might want to start something between 5 to 10% and gradually go up to something like 20, 25, or even 30%, ensuring that you neutralize this early if there are any signs or symptoms of skin irritation. So chemical peels for at-home use, in my opinion, probably best left um, aside. Which brings me to the point of microneedling. So you've seen in my previous videos for many years, in fact, probably spanning nearly a decade, I've advocated the use of conservative microneedling. I don't believe in at-home microneedling using long microneedles anywhere between two to three mils because once again, that can lead to excessive scarring. And the sweet spot for me, even in the old videos, has always been around 0.5 millimeters because at that depth, it is importantly safe but also effective in stimulating collagen production. My recommendation for an at-home microneedling tool that is safest and easiest to use and also most effective is the tool from Banish. In particular, the Banisher 3.0. I've tried several tools on the market, but what sets the Banisher apart is the use of 0.5 millimeter needles. This is the perfect depth to stimulate collagen production without causing excess trauma, which may lead to skin scarring. Collagen is key to improving skin texture, reducing fine lines, and minimizing acne scars. What's even more impressive about the Banisher is that it has the thinnest needle on the market, which is a huge advantage. Thinner needles don't produce a traditional wound, meaning there's a significantly lower risk of causing any scarring or unnecessary damage to the skin. This is especially important because excess trauma can actually lead to more scarring which is exactly what you don't want to do when using microneedling tools. The speed at which you will notice results depends on your skin type, but also your scar type. But on average, you should start to see results within one to two months of continued use. For anyone nervous about microneedling at home, the Banisher is hands down my top recommendation. Its thin needles are specifically designed to work effectively without the risk of thicker, more damaging needles found in other tools. If you're looking for a safe but reliable option to use at home, the Banisher is it. So if you are a proponent of clinical peels, in other words, going to a clinic, but also using microneedling at home, can you get it done? Here's the answer, absolutely. If you're getting microneedling, give it at least two to three weeks before having a chemical peel and the vice versa applies. What you want to do is allow your skin to heal up completely before using either modality. Using both in combination can theoretically increase the amount of collagen, but at the end of the day, be guided by your dermatologist.
Both microneedling as well as chemical peels can be used together for increased amount of collagen remodeling and scar mitigation. But at the end of the day, be guided by your skincare professional. Guys, to summarize this, time and time again, I keep saying you've got to be safe with what you do. My advocate is to use safe at home microneedling over chemical peels. Executed correctly, you will get improvements in your scarring. Of utmost importance, and I keep repeating this, is to get your acne under absolute control. Any amount of inflammation, no matter how small, can reduce your body's immune system to produce collagen effectively and remodel scars. What I tell patients is as simple as this. If you're trying to go to the gym to build up, let's say, your glutes or your quads, but you get a tiny tear, that little tear leads to inflammation and you will never ever build up new muscle. Because the body is trying to repair the amount of inflammation, it's not worried about building new muscle. The exact same thing happens when you have acne and acne scarring. If you have just the tiniest amount of inflammation, your skin is not at its best to produce collagen and remodel scars. So above all, find an effective way to enable your skin to produce collagen at its utmost. Put acne in remission. Guys, I hope you liked that um, video. It is a novel idea about how to treat acne scars at home, which I firmly believe can be an effective option for many patients.